actually down in Madison here. We're going to be hooking up with our good friend Brian Zupke. Hey, Big B is on a fantastic perch bite, and I'll tell you, he's been sending me pictures for the last two weeks. A lot of these perch he's catching are in that 10 to 12 and a half inch range, and if anybody knows anything about perch, them are perfect eating perch for sure. These lakes, we fish real deep for perch, so this is called a pencil weight. Basically, oh, I got a rat's nest going in. Basically, piece of metal, and it's flat on the top here. And the reason it's flat on the top here is so when you're fishing real deep, 40, 50, 60, 70 feet, you get a good return on your sonar signal. So it shows up really good on your Vexlark. Sometimes a smaller jig can be hard to see. And it gets you down real quick. So when the school of fish come in, you're not wasting two minutes trying to let a five mil tungsten sink for a minute and a half. So what we do is we run a leader from our pencil weight to our jig and you run the leader so it's just shorter than the weight. So when we're dropping it down and it sinks real quick, that line doesn't have a chance to get above the weight and get wrapped around the main line and tangled up. So you know you're always in the zone down there and ready to fish and nothing's wrapped up and mangled on you. It doesn't matter if it's seven, nine, 10, 11, 12 inches. For the most part, you gotta keep these fish and add them to your limit right there because you're not gonna really be able to release many of these. I, I would say 30 to 40 feet is kind of the cutoff for really releasing them. Okay. I, I think out here, you, you know, every now and then you might have one that you send in the hole and you'll you'll watch it go down on, on your Vexlar or your, your right. craft, whatever you're using it, and you'll be like, oh, we made it. But, you know, if, if you look close at them, I mean, it's not just the air bladder, right? Like their eyes bulge out. And if you kind of look at the air bladder, some of the blood vessels start to hemorrhage. Right. So there's probably a lot more internal stuff going on there that you're not seeing. So even if they make it down to the bottom, I don't think they got it. What we used to do though, if you're in an area that's real deep and, and you're having a problem with a lot of small fish, okay, we pinch the barb on your hook and then when you set the hook, if you know if it was a small fish, right. especially with these big pencil weights, you can just kind of slam your rod up and down, let that pencil weight rack that jig back and forth and like four out of five times you could shake the hook Pop out of it. them. And make sure you're watching it because sometimes you'll feel it, but a lot of times you will not. You'll just see it. Yep. So. So like once they're right on your bait, make sure you're watching the rod and not the fish finder. Okay. Oh yeah, she's got sweet. Big fatty mama. Big male. So every now and then they will fool me. I'll get home and I'll think I got it, but I'm wrong. Um, obviously your first big clue is gonna be, especially you start getting into late winter, you're gonna start getting a big belly on them, getting closer to spawn here. Right. But the males, a lot of times are just, if you kind of just profile them, their head looks bigger in comparison to their body. Like the females a lot of times will look like they have a small little head and then their back and their belly kind of comes out. Whereas the males have kind of a big blockier head. A lot of times the males get a bigger bump on their nose. Like, let's just see if I can find, here's a kind of a comparison, the female, like a smaller, more streamlined, pointy shaped head. Male's kind of a big square block of your head. This is a, a big female. Um, I feel like the males are the better eating perch, even though they're, they average a little smaller. Like let's say you're averaging your 10 and a half to 11 inch females, your males are gonna average like eight to nine and a half. Okay. But I feel like a, a nine and a half inch male has like as much meat as a 10 and a half or 11 inch female because when you get below the lateral line and around the rib cage, right. the males will hold the thickness of the flay all the way through to the belly. Whereas the big females, once you get on top of the rib cage, I feel like a lot of that meat is, is real thin because they have to make room for those eggs and a lot of their energy goes into egg production. That makes a lot of sense. And, I, and it might just be in my head, maybe it's no, a real I thing, but I also that. feel like the meat on the males is, is slightly firmer. But that that part I can't promise. That might just be in my brain. <laughs> Tell you what, the key is definitely we're drilling a lot of holes and being real mobile. Big schools, and you're basically what you want to do is you don't want to be in the center of the school. Um, I was talking to Brian and Pete about this. 
when you're in the center, you're marking a lot of fish, but they're really tough to catch. So getting to the outside of the school really seems to be the key too. And you'll catch three or four or five out of a hole. And uh, you know, then it seems like they, they, they kind of realize what's going on. And basically, you know, then you just move on to another hole. And again, just to try to stay with these fish. I'm just loading it up, not taking any chances with not having enough spikes on there. Just, are you crushing them too, or the nope. spikes? Nope. Just okay. leaving them all whole, huh? Yeah. Apparently they're liking it. A lot of times some little things like that make a big difference. You oh, know, yeah. just the way, the presentation of the way they have that bait hanging on there. Yeah. Hey, I'll tell you what, you know, like Caleb was saying here, little things make a big difference and he's really loading up his jig. Um, and what I have, I've got red and white spikes on here. So I had two on before, it wasn't getting bit as good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna keep loading them spikes up on there. And I've got four on there and I'm not gonna crush them. Sometimes I will crush them and uh, let that uh, some of that body fluid kind of ooze out on it. And that can make a big difference too. Sometimes even just putting a little bit of scent inside your spike container like this, uh, that can help out too. I mean, just again, it always comes down to little things you do make a big difference in fish. Yeah, it's not a bad one. Nice and nice sunlight. Pretty fish. No doubt, it's a great day to be alive. Sure is. Hey, if you're having a problem putting fish in your dish, I think you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel down below.